the economy has come to a halt. And any idea that GDP is rising, I mean, it's only rising on the excess spending that the government is doing. That's not productive spending at all. The technical position in the market now looks very, very good because having just backed off from that 2000 level from, for what? I don't know, fourth, fifth, sixth time. I think it's ready to really go through. It's all credit. If you want to protect yourself from a collapsing credit system, um, and the reason it's collapsing is because it's dollars that run it, and it's dollars that are collapsing, and that will take down everything else. If you really think that is a risk, then you have to get into money, which has no counterparty risk at all. And that is only one thing, and that is physical gold. The U.S. economy teeters on the edge of a substantial debt spiral, poised to catapult gold prices significantly higher in the coming quarters. The recent inflation data, revealing a surprising cooling of consumer prices in October, has shifted expectations regarding a December Fed rate hike. Consequently, the gold market surged, nearing its session highs, signaling potential breakthroughs, according to Alasdair McLeod, head of research at Gold Money. He highlights the repeated approach and retreat from the 2000 level in the gold market, suggesting a promising breakthrough, potentially resulting in substantial gains, a positive shift in the market's dynamics. The ongoing rise in gold prices, marking the first weekly gain in three weeks, reflects investor confidence in the Federal Reserve's cessation of interest rate hikes, pressuring the dollar and treasury yields. Moreover, the dollar fell more than 1% against major currencies on Tuesday after U.S. consumer price data showed the pace of inflation moderating further in October, increasing the odds that the Federal Reserve is done hiking interest rates. We think that the dollar will continue to weaken a bit throughout the end of the year, maybe even early into January, said John Doyle, head of trading and dealing at Monix USA in Washington. Alistair sees the dollar's decline could trigger a domino effect, bringing down other aspects of the economy. He advocates for a shift towards investments devoid of counterparty risks as a safeguard against the impending collapse of the credit system. However, Alistair's primary concern lies in the fundamental economic landscape particularly within the United States. He highlights a growing budget deficit and suggests that government accounting manipulates deficit figures, masking the true financial state. With the anticipation of higher debt interest payments due to rising rates, Alasdair predicts an impending recession. We will present clips from Alasdair McLeod's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Um, for the last 20 years, everybody's been telling us um, when interest rates rise, that's bad for gold. When interest rates fall, it's good for gold. But gold fell with interest rates, with bond yields, if you like. But then there came a point where, um, you know, we bounced. So it just shows how the technical moves you're seeing in the market actually got nothing to do with, uh, you know, what we're being told by um, so-called experts in the market and all the rest of it. And I think that um, the technical position in the market now looks very, very good because having just backed off from that 2000 level from, for what? I don't know, fourth, fifth, sixth time, I think it's ready to really go through. And if you look at the moving averages in the chart underneath it, they are moving up in bullish sequence. They underwrite the price around about 1920, 1910, something like that. We didn't actually get down to there. I think we got down to, what, 1930 or something. So you can see that the number of things are coming right. Now, we need to look, I think, at um, the fundamentals as well. And that is, if you just just look at the 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 uh, situation with the debt trap, that there is absolutely no doubt, America cannot escape. And America is important because uh, the dollar is the currency which um, everybody every other currency is tied to. It will refer to they refer to the dollar. If you weaken against the dollar, you have to raise your interest rates. And the if you want proof of that, just look what happened to the yen. I mean, they've still got negative rates in Japan. Um, they're desperately trying to suppress bond yields. Uh, and uh, the yen has collapsed. It's gone from, what, 110 down to 151, something like that. I mean, this is something like a 40% collapse in not a lot of time. Why? Because they have resisted the rise in interest rates. So everybody else has to rise, raise their interest rates in order to keep up with the dollar. <clears throat> and this is creating a, you know, a, a real crisis. But the problem that <clears throat> we have with the dollar is who is going to buy all the government debt that is due to be uh, rolled over 
and new debt issued in the current fiscal year, which only started at the beginning of last month. Um, we're looking at 7.6 trillion of debt being rolled over. We're looking at, well, I think that the budget deficit this year could well be well in excess of three and a half trillion. What makes me say that? Well, first of all, um, last year, it was nearly a trillion of um, interest um, was cost was in that debt. They also um, fiddled the figures. It, the figures came out about 1.7 trillion deficit, but actually that included um, an adding back of $300 billion, which um, uh, th they had originally allocated uh, for, you know, paying off students' loans. Um, but then the courts turned that down. So what do they do? <clears throat> it was never drawn down. They just add it back into the figures. So they reduced the level from $2 trillion down to $1.7. I mean, this is the magic of government accounting. So actually, the deficit was $2 trillion, of which 48% was debt interest. So what's the debt interest going to be? This time round, well, we can see this 7.6 trillion is going to be refinanced at higher rates. You have got um, whatever the, the, the budget deficit uh, works out at. So you're, you're looking at something like up to 11 trillion has got to be financed at current rates. Compare that with um, what the uh, average uh, debt interest was in the last fiscal year, and you were looking at 2.7%. Now we have short term rates over 5% and uh, the yield curve is a bit negative. So, um, you know, but you're still paying 4.5% going out along the yield curve. There's no way that um, you were going to see debt interest, um, I think, much below 1.5 trillion. So, 1.5 trillion of debt interest. And if, um, I mean, well, we're, we're, we're heading into a recession of that, I'm absolutely certain. The failures earlier this year of a group of mid-sized U.S. banks grabbed headlines and yielded many questions about the effectiveness of their risk management programs. In a recent report about the 2023 banking turmoil, the Basel Committee for Banking Supervision described this year's bank failures as the most significant system-wide banking stress since the Great Financial Crisis, GFC, in terms of scale and scope. McLeod strongly believes that the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury play pivotal roles in ensuring the stability and resilience of the banking system. Their decision not to pursue a bail-in strategy aligns with the imperative to safeguard depositors, a move motivated by concerns over the FDIC's potential lack of adequate resources to serve as a safety net effectively. According to McLeod, there's an urgent need for a rescue plan to address the crisis within the system, which he suspects is being handled discreetly. He highlights the Federal Reserve's proactive measures to bolster banks, mainly their acceptance of undervalued bonds as collateral for loans at their full face value. This move aims to prevent crises similar to those seen in Silicon Valley banks, which suffered from mismatches in funding long-term debts at lower rates and faced losses when interest rates surged. Let's get back to the interview. I think the first thing, I mean, your point about Dodd-Frank and bailing in and all the rest of it, I think is well made. Um, you have to bear in mind that um, Probably the most important function of the Fed and the U.S. Treasury is to ensure the integrity of the commercial banking system. They will not go down the bail-in route. They will. They they have to protect depositors because um, the FDIC is not large enough actually to act as a backstop. And in any event, um, you know this idea that. You know, rich depositors. Well, who cares about them? I mean, that's 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 nonsense because that's not how deposits originate. Deposits originate with loans, and um, uh, you know the deposits, if you like, are the symptom of the loans on the other side of the balance sheet. Um, and um, really, um, you know, it's it 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 means there has to be a rescue. Uh, you know, we don't know. Um, how much the rescue is, we, we can't quantify it. All we do know is that the whole system is in uh, crisis, which is being sat on. I mean, this is the whole uh, concept. Um, but this is why the Fed has gone uh, uh, um, uh, into the market and in, well, into, into, into the banking system and said, look, if you've got bonds which you want, um, you know, which, which are underwater and your auditors are saying you've got to value these at mark to market, we will take those on our own balance sheet and lend you 100 
um, cents on the dollar or one hundred dollars. You know, we will lend lend you the face value of those bonds, so that um, you know, okay, um, you know, you can say to your auditors, you 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 value these at par. And you know, also of course, the Fed is valuing it, <laughs> valuing their um, holdings at par. Um, so the reason they've had to do this is basically to stop um, the sort of um, you know uh, Silicon Valley bank crisis where banks bought um, long-term debt, um, funding it. Um, you know, it's sort of. Uh, you know, the Fed, uh, close to the Fed funds rate of uh, at the time of sort of just over zero, um, getting a yield pickup of, say, three quarters of a percent on a 10 year U.S. Treasury um, and then finding that their P&L account has got destroyed by the rise in interest rates because they're having to fund it at now at 5 percent, 5.3 percent, whatever. Um, and at the same time, the capital value of the bond has collapsed. You know, this is um, and it's just completely destroys any bank with any degree of operational leverage. Uh, and that's what's happened. Um, I would expect, um, you know, more um, or an extension of that and also more help from the authorities. Now, whether it's it's the fiscal authorities, whether it's the monetary authorities, I mean, they will sort it out between them to try and stop the rot. Um so what actually is that rot? Well, you know that we do know that um, banks have got real trouble um, in terms of uh, bonds with, with long maturities or certainly longer than short term maturities, more than one year uh, on which they've got capital losses. Um, we also know that these banks are facing um, problems from uh, their, you know, their, their, their loans. I mean, look at uh, commercial real estate, for example. Um, I would say also the private equity industry is also getting into great difficulties because they've basically leveraged up um, equity investment on the back of low interest rates. And as those low interest rates have to be rolled, um, they're facing, you know, it's it's just made the whole thing completely uneconomic. Um, we've got that problem in, in this country. Um, and I don't know to what extent it's a problem in America, but I can imagine that the problem is there as well because the private equity industry is a very, very big industry. Gold is reaching new highs and potentially forming a bullish flag pattern. Even Rich Dad and Poor Dad author Richard Kiyosaki forecast a gold price of $5,000 in the next few years, while most banks suggest that gold has significant potential over the next five years. How might the recent market trends and economic indicators shape the trajectory of gold prices in the near future? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.